a full Ilona. Please write. Ladies and gentlemen, the governor, state of Hawaii, the Honorable David Keegan. No holding out, please be seated. A ku iluna, please rise. Au hea o ko e ko ka aha, e noho kui kava ana kea aha, ho o kolo kolo ki e ke, hano hano, o komoku aina o Hawaii. Hear ye, hear ye, hear ye. This Honorable Supreme Court of the State of Hawaii is now convened in special session. Inoho Ilalo, please be seated. All right, good afternoon, aloha and welcome everyone. Court is convened in special session to honor the late Ronald T.Y. Moon, retired Chief Justice of the Hawaii Supreme Court. To all of our guests, thank you for joining us today. And on behalf of the court, I want to extend our aloha and sympathy to the moon Ohana and to thank them for allowing us this opportunity to honor a great man. I want to acknowledge Judge Keith Hirooka, who's joining the court in place of Justice Michael Wilson, who could not be here today, but who sends his aloha to the moon family. Although we're all wearing masks in the courtroom this afternoon in accordance with our judiciary policy, those who are coming up to speak may remove their mask while giving their remarks if they so choose. I'd like to now begin our program by calling upon the Royal Order of Kamehameha, Ali'i Aimoku Arthur Ayu, Ali'i Sir Kainoa Danes, and Ali'i Bronson Silva, who will grace us with an Oli in honor of CJ Moon's membership as an honorary Ali'i with the Royal Order, position that CJ Moon held in the highest regard. Ano ai no me ke aloha e na mamu o Hawaii mai ka hiki a ka la i ha e ha e a kau i ka mole o lehua. Thank you so much, Honorable Governor, Chief Justice Rickard Walden, the Associate Justices of the Supreme Court for allowing us to be here for this moment. Just a few words of appreciation for this man that we come here to honor. He was inducted into our ranks under the tradition of King Kamehameha V, Lot Kamehameha V, as being the first Chief Justice of the territory of the Kingdom of Hawaii. And so in that tradition, he was inducted to our ranks. But we will honor him with words of his life. But the simple words that I would like to share for this man through the Royal Order of Kamehameha is he living his life for truth and justice. We now offer our aloha to him, to his family, to everyone present. And if the court will please indulge us, just noticing the program, 
We will continue to honor and guard this portrait of this gentleman for the first two speakers, for Mr. Broderick, and then also our other member of the Royal Order. As soon as the former governor, why he concludes his word, we will then proceed in honor of Governor Wahe. <laughs> Mahalo for that beautiful tribute. I'd now like to introduce our speakers here today, starting with the Honorable Michael Broderick, the former First Circuit District Family Court Judge and former Administrative Director of the Courts during C.J. Moon's tenure. Judge Broderick. Chief Justice Rechtenwald, if I could face the audience, please. Thank you. All of our speakers. It was 1992, and I had just interviewed to be the director of the Judiciary Center for Alternative Dispute Resolution. I came home that night, my wife, Miley, asked, did you get the job? I said, I don't know, but I met this great guy. Clearly frustrated, Miley then said, well, did the interview at least go okay? I said, I don't know, but I met this great guy. With exasperation, she then asked, well, who is this great guy? That great guy was Ronald T.Y. Moon, at the time an associate justice of the Hawaii Supreme Court. That day started what would be an incredible friendship for the next 30 years. C.J. Moon taught me so much, and almost always through his actions, rarely through his words. He taught me the value of a strong work ethic. Every day, every day, he arrived to work first and left last. His work ethic was legendary. And through him, I came to understand, to really understand what it meant to fully embrace and completely meet your responsibilities. And never did the CJ complain about the pressures about the burdens, about the stress of the job. To the contrary, he often told me how blessed he was to be able to serve. The CJ taught me the value and the need to treat everyone, and I mean everyone, with dignity and respect. One day I walked into his office and he was crying. He told me that that morning, one of the building janitors had suddenly passed away. He said how he had gotten to know the man and he talked intimately about his wife and children. The CJ would later give the eulogy at that custodian worker's funeral and he wrote it himself. Chief Justice Moon taught me the importance of commitment. On the day he asked me to serve as the administrative director of the courts, he said we must approach our relationship as a marriage, that we should both do everything humanly possible to make our relationship, our marriage, succeed. We often joked that neither of us ever threatened divorce. <laughs> Chief Justice Moon taught me about humility. Very early on in our relationship, I told him how good I felt about a mediation program that I had helped develop. He looked at me with those eyes that could kill, you know those eyes, and said, Mike, let others sing your praises. Lesson learned. And he often told me that when, when nominating judges, 
it was critical to him that he picked women and men who, in his words, quote, would not get the black robe syndrome, suddenly thinking they were somebody. Despite all of his accomplishments, the Chief Justice stayed humble until his last breath. He taught me about character and integrity. As the head of the judiciary, he often had to walk a tight rope between doing what was best for the judiciary and its 1,800 employees without compromising his personal character and integrity. Not once, not once did I see him abandon his character and integrity, even if it meant facing intense scrutiny and criticism, often very public criticism. And although it's not a particularly sexy subject, the CJ taught me how critical the independence of the judiciary is to a well-functioning democracy. Time and time again, he was fiercely protective of the Hawaii state judiciary's independence. And at every turn, he reminded whoever would listen that the judiciary was not a department, but a co-equal branch of government whose judges must, must remain free of any outside influence. That he promoted that critical understanding so effectively is one of his greatest achievements. And at times, the personal and professional sacrifice was immense. And Chief Justice Moon taught me about patriotism. On the morning of the 9-11 bombings, we met in his chambers at 5.30 a.m. And he asked me if we should close the courts. I said, yes, because we don't know what's coming next. He raised his middle finger, uttered an obscenity at the attackers, and said, quote, Mike, that's what they want us to do. If we close, they win. We're open for business. As was almost always the case when we disagreed, he was right and I was wrong. When I was sworn in as a judge in this very room 20 years ago, I said unabashedly that I felt love in my heart for Chief Justice Moon. I visited with the CJ very shortly before he passed. We got a chance to say we loved each other. I will always have love in my heart for Chief Justice Moon. He was my dear friend, the only mentor I have ever had. And his incredible legacy is undeniable and will live on for years to come in these hallowed halls, in the state judiciary, and in the Hawaii. He loved so much. Thank you so much, Judge Broderick. So between our speakers, we're uh, switching out the uh, microphone and the cleaning the podium. So let's just take one moment. Now it's my pleasure to call upon the Honorable John Waihei, former governor of the state of Hawaii, who appointed Chief Justice Moon as Chief Justice of this court. Governor Waihei, thank you for joining us today. It please the court. You know, it's, <laughs> it's been a while since I wore a suit and yeah. stood in the courtroom. And last Friday, as I was leaving, I asked Justice Wilson, I said, Mr. Justice, what does one wear to a special session to talk about a justice that they had a hand in appointing? And he says, oh, I think you can get away with wearing your Aloha shirt. I notice he's not here, yeah. you know, and, uh, and if I didn't learn anything else in law school, I know that you just don't irritate a judge in their own courtroom. It doesn't matter, you know. Um, it's a... It's a, you know, question is always asked me, people would ask me all the time, because I, I appointed uh, Justice Moon, and they would say, 
why would you do that? You know, what? In fact, he asked me that question once. He said, why, why would you do that? And he says, and, and the, it was in relationship to the fact that he was a Republican and I wasn't. And he asked me that question and, and I told him, I said, because it makes me look good. You know, yeah, I have a theory. I, I, we talked about it somewhat this morning and not a theory, a, a point of view, which is when I first came back from college and was extremely sure of myself, I worked on the Y&I coast. And one of the people I met was a, a lady called Frenchie DeSoto. So I would try to impress her with all of my credentials. And she would tell me that uh, none of those things really matter. What she cared about, what people cared about, what was what was in your heart, in your na'al, in your guts, who you really are. And I always took that advice to heart. You know, I, I believe there was the judicial selections job to go and find out everything they possibly could about a person's credentials. And it was my job in appointing, in, in, in nominating, to look for something more, something more. What made the person, you know? And Justice Moon never even, I think, ever remembered this, at least when I re related it to him. But when I was a young lawyer, starting out as a plaintiff's lawyer, he was on the other side. He was a defense attorney. And in the middle of the case, which I'd been working so diligently on to prove myself to some impossibly low-paying partners, <clears throat> that... Uh, you know, I, I, I could do something about it. I get this offer settlement from Justice, uh, from then Attorney Moon. And I look at it, and it was on the upside of fair. And the first thing I did was think, I wonder if I really messed up on my calculations. <laughs> I might be really, you know, like lowballing. And when I checked it out with some senior attorneys, it was, it was right there. It was right on. And that was my first impression of Justice Moon, of somebody who believed that this system ought to work for everybody and not have a lot of games going on, you know? And later on, as I got to know him better and asked him about his background, I found out that uh, he, as a young lawyer, was a member of the Junior Chamber of Congress, uh, Congress, the JCs. Now the JCs in those days didn't have the civilized reputation they have today as a result of admitting women members, you see. So what that told me was that this guy has a lot of, he has room for improvement. He does get better. And he even ended up joining the Royal Order of Kamehameha, which shows you how far that can go. But these are the qualities I was looking for. I was looking for a judge who would be fair. I was looking for a judge who would be able to grow with whatever Hawaii was developing into. And mostly, I was looking for somebody who truly loved the institution that he would be heading. And it was clear to me that the justice, chief justice, had a vision. And he had a vision of justice being, being done fairly and quickly and equally for everybody. And it didn't matter who you were. If you came before his courts, you could expect to be treated equally and fairly. That's why I would appoint Ron Moon, Chief Justice of this Supreme Court. It was my honor then, and it was my honor today to claim that privilege. And so I wanna thank the Moon family. I wanna thank those who shared him with all of us and for allowing us to take advantage of who he was. Aloha. 
Uh, and thank you, Governor Wahey. Thank you very much for joining us today. All right, next we'll be hearing from the Honorable Karen Holma, a former law clerk uh, to CJ Moon, who's now a judge of the District Court of the First Circuit. Judge Holma. May it please the court, Chief Justice Reckonwald, Associate Justices, Governor Ige, Senator Hirono, Governor Waihei, members of the Moon family, honored and distinguished guests. Good afternoon, my name is Karen Holma. I had the privilege of being Chief Justice, then Associate Justice Ron Moon's first law clerk when he was appointed to the Supreme Court in 1990. For those of you who like math, that was 32 years ago and I was only 10 years old at the time. It is my honor today to speak and make a few remarks on behalf of all of Chief Justice Moon's law clerks. It's not overstating it to say that the opportunity to be a law clerk for Chief Justice Moon was the opportunity of a lifetime. To begin with, we got the chance to work for a truly great judge. Most if not all of us were really intimidated by the fact that we were going to be working for a justice of the Hawaii Supreme Court, but particularly Justice Moon. The stories about him were legendary. When he was at circuit court, he was a settlement conference judge and he would have all night settlement conferences. Would we as law clerks have to work all night long for him? And of course there was his famous black book in which he allegedly wrote down the names of lawyers and others who disappointed him, shall we say. I never saw the contents of that black book. It was just my goal not to be named in that black book. And his expectations were high. Each of us law clerks got the same question during our interview. You understand that this is job is not from 7.45 a.m. to 4.30 p.m., right? No truer words were ever spoken. But as Mr. Broderick said earlier, Justice Moon was the first person to arrive in the morning, and he was always the first person or the last person to leave. As one law clerk put it, Justice Moon exemplified what a justice of the Hawaii Supreme Court was. He was committed to justice in every case. He respected Hawaii's many cultures and he promoted diversity to the most. We as law clerks thought we as brilliant, newly educated legal minds were going to work for him and help him and make him a better justice by briefing his cases and writing his bench memos. Of course, the truth was just the opposite. It was he who taught us, who mentored us and helped us. He had a profound impact on all of us. In addition to being a great judge, CJ Moon was a great man. He was also always measured and thoughtful in his demeanor. He was always calm. He was funny and had an awesome sense of humor. He took a genuine interest in us as law clerks and he cared about what we did, had suggestions for us in our careers after we finished our clerkships. When I say that it was an opportunity of a lifetime to be a law clerk to him, I'm being very sincere. Each of us law clerks owe our careers and more to Chief Justice Moon, and we will miss him very much. Thank you. Thank you, Judge Holma. Next, I'm pleased to welcome uh, Robert Bobby Chong, former longtime chair of the Board of Bar Examiners. Mr. Chong. Thank you, Chief Justice Recknowell, Justices of the Supreme Court, honored guests, Governor Gay, Governor Wahey. And I'm especially honored uh, to be able to speak uh, and address the family, Mariko, Julie, Scott, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Lonnie's not here, but uh, I'm very sorry for your loss, but I'm very thankful that I've been given the honor to say a few words on behalf of uh, CJ Moon. My relationship with uh, Ron Moon began when I joined the law firm of Lutkeman Ventura Moon and Ayabe back in 1980 as an associate. 
I was his first associate. I worked assigned to two uh, senior partners. That was Ron Moon and Sid Ayabe. Eventually, I ended up just being his, Ron Moon's uh, sole associate. And at that time, our practice consisted primarily of workers' compensation cases and civil cases. Ron had about 60% civil and 40% work comp. And I certainly uh, ended up following that uh, same pattern of uh, case load uh, as he did. Um, <clears throat> By the time I joined, when I joined the firm, I was already a member of the Board of Examiners, uh, which was, and I was appointed by C.J. Uh, Richardson back in 1979. And so when I joined the firm, I was already uh, a member of the board. And I've been a member of the board ever since. That's over 43 years and continuing. Ron Moon earned the reputation of being a tough litigator but always fair. Being a former city prosecutor and having tried hundreds of criminal and civil cases and work comp cases, his trial experience prepared him for his years uh, on the bench later and to become one of the more, more effective, I believe, uh, trial judges ever to sit on our, in our courts. I can honestly say that Ron Moon was had become my mentor. He was certainly responsible for my own successes in the profession. Yes, he could be temperamental at times and bullheaded. He was, after all, you know, a good Korean. But he was always patient and most important, forgiving when I screwed up. I don't recall him ever yelling or chastising me, even when I, even during the time we were trying cases and, and in the heat of battle. If anything, those experiences only nurtured our trust for each other and fostered our enduring friendship over the years. It seemed like no sooner had I joined the firm and was getting into the practice uh, and being mentored by Ron Moon and things are going great. And I was learning a lot that he decided he was interested in, in leaving the practice of law and, and going into public service as a trial judge at the First Circuit. <clears throat> yes, I had those selfish feelings of betrayal, thinking that he was abandoning me, and that, God, I'm going to be stuck with these horrible cases that we had that were already scheduled for trial and in various stages of discovery, and not looking forward to those days ahead without him. But we managed to survive. And notwithstanding those dog cases that he had, we both worked on, we managed to resolve them. But I found myself being thrust into the driver's seat from being in a position of comfort in the passenger seat. And, uh, but it was probably for that very reason that uh, I was able to learn so much and was forced to learn uh to be able to survive as history has borne out you know ron was an effective trial judge because he was such a good litigator he knew all the nuances of the practice he had both uh, plaintiff's cases and defense cases but primarily defense cases but that experience is what enabled him, I think, uh, to effectively uh, try cases uh, and also settle cases because he could go to the heart of and the issues of cases and can point out to, to the litigants before him what their weaknesses were and their strengths. It's not too often that uh, a judge can gain and earn the respect of both sides of the bar, and I think Ron certainly did that. I didn't realize he had an ambition to go further on the bench. And of course, at that point in time, after years as a trial judge, he was appointed as an associate justice of the Hawaii Supreme Court. And again, uh, he had further ambitions and thanks to Judge, Judge Governor Waihe at the time, 
uh, was appointed to, as the Chief Justice of, of this court. <clears throat> When he became Chief Justice, uh, the chair of the Board of Examiners was uh, also a, a circuit court judge, Dan Healy, who decided that he, would he wanted to retire. So CJ Moon was left with the uh, job of trying to find a new chair for the Board of Examiners. And <clears throat> for those of you who don't know, the Board of Examiners is the ones that administer the bar exam um uh, for for the state of hawaii and of course we review all the applicants that apply to take the bar exam and try to make sure that uh, only qualified applicants apply well at the time i told ron i had dan had been on the uh, chair for about 10 years uh, on the board and i too had been on the board by that time about 10 years so I thought it was a good time to make room for others to be, be members of the board. And so I submitted my letter of resignation to, to Ron Moon and then promptly went, I had it hand delivered to the, to the court and then promptly went off to Maui to try a case. Um, and when I got back, I got a message waiting for me at the office to call Ron Moon. So I was expecting him to say, I accepted your resignation. Unfortunately, he said, no, I want you to become chair of the board to take Dan Healy's pace. I said, well, CJ, you know how busy our practice is, especially as an insurance defense attorney. And, you know, we were double, triple set for trials uh, almost every week of the, of the year. And I said, he says, no, I want you to be take over as chair. I said, well, I'll give you two to three years of my time as chair allowing you to find uh, a new chair that could fill the position on a per more permanent basis. Well, 20 years later, plus, <laughs> and then three times I, I submitted my letter of resignation, but he would never accept it. So I ended up being chair for that many, for those many years. Um, and um, I must say, uh, it could not have happened at a more critical time in bar admissions for, for our state because it was going through so many changes. Back in the day, the board used to write their own questions for the bar exam. And it was very, very, very challenging uh, to write qual quality type questions as, in addition to, to training people on how to grade exams properly. But Ron Moon as the chief justice had an opportunity to uh, select someone else to be the liaison justice for the board of examiners uh, to to basically uh, uh, report back to the court uh, the ongoings of the board of examiners and vice versa. But Ron Moon decided that no, he was not going to appoint anybody. He wanted to be the person that would. Uh, handled the liaison position as, you know, for the court. And so throughout his tenure as Chief Justice, he basically uh, attended our meetings. He went to national conferences for the National Conference of Bar Examiners, which is based out of Wisconsin. The National Conference of Bar Examiners uh, is an organization, a national organization, which all jurisdictions belong to, which assist jurisdictions in uh, not only uh, preparing the bar exam questions, but also grading and bringing more integrity and accounting to, to the bar, to bar admissions. Ron earned the, a reputation as, because he was a chief justice and he was attending these conferences. There are no other justices around the country for any other state that would go to these conferences as often as he did. And he certainly earned the respect, not only of his peers as fellow chief justices, because he was directly involved in many of these, the ongoings of bar admissions on a national basis, but he could speak intelligently to his fellow justices and also convey to the board members of the NCBE, his thoughts uh, about bar admissions. And it was very, it was an honor for me 
being the chair to have Ron Moon next to me throughout these conferences and meetings and so forth, uh, directly involved uh, with uh, the process of bar admissions and trying to keep uh, the whole uh, concept of bar admissions updated and contemporary, cont contemporaneous with changes going on in the country uh, as, uh, as you know, we were testing new lawyers every year to become uh, and bar admissions. <clears throat> Ron Moon had a special place in his heart, I think for our state and wanted to make certain um, that we stood out as a, as, a, as, a, as a unique jurisdiction in the sense that we're one, we're out here on, uh, and, you know, my, the situation of involving minorities is in reverse, you know, uh, but he always looked out for the minorities and particularly the testing of minorities in, in the bar admission process. And he was well known for that. And certainly people respected for him, not only at the, at the National Conference of Bar Examiners, but also his fellow justices, uh, chief justices from around the country. I wanna thank Ron Moon for being not only my friend, my mentor and supporter of bar admissions and the bar admission process in Hawaii that is second to none. The Hawaii Board of Bar Examiners and the National Conference of Bar Examiners We'll miss him dearly. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chong. Next, it's my honor to call the Honorable Summer Kapau Odo to the podium. She's the uh, president of the uh, Hawaii State Trial Judges Association and a judge of the District Court of the First Circuit. Judge Kapau Odo. May it please the court. Aloha Mai Kako, Chief Justice Rechtenwald, Associate Justices, the family of the Honorable Chief Justice Moon, Governor Ige, Governor Waihe'e, and other, all other distinguished speakers and guests. The Hawaii State Trial Judges Association appreciates this opportunity to honor and mahalo CJ Moon. Our judges extend heartfelt condolences to the Moon Ohana. CJ Moon will be long remembered by Hawaii's trial judges. He was a special one of us from his days as a circuit court judge with that black book where he kept the names of habitually late attorneys to his skills as a settlement judge, where he would gently persuade the parties to resolve their disputes to avoid costly trials with unpredictable outcomes. Attorneys who appeared before then Circuit Judge Moon heard about this black book and most knew better than to be late for a hearing, let alone a jury trial. But as he later shared with First Circuit Deputy Chief Judge Jeanette Castagnetti, on one occasion when an attorney did not promptly return from a 10 minute recess during a jury trial, Judge Moon told his law clerk to go ahead and seat the jury and opposing counsel in the courtroom. They, along with Judge Moon sitting up at the bench, waited in silence for the attorney to return. When the attorney finally entered the courtroom several minutes later, realizing everyone was waiting on him, Judge Moon summoned the attorney to the bench and sanctioned him $50. And he told him that if he continued to be late, the sanctions would grow exponentially. The attorney was never late again. Trial judges will always remember CJ Moon for his commitment to judicial education. In 2016, six years after he retired, CJ Moon agreed to be the subject of a roast for the HSBA's annual dinner, an event sponsored by the Hawaii State Bar Foundation to raise funds for many charitable organizations and programs. CJ Moon was, as he put it, a little uncomfortable about the roast, but he deemed the fundraiser a good cause. Many at that time were not aware that the Trial Judges Association was in great need of financial resources for continuing judicial education. CJ Moon, never forgetting what it was like to be a trial judge, 
knew that judicial conferences are essential because they also provide a gathering place for judges to exchange ideas and discuss matters relating to the important work of the courts. So he agreed to be the target of jokes in public setting on one condition, that the Hawaii State Trial Judges Association receive a portion of the dinner's proceeds. As E.J. Moon explained, adequately educating our judges on a continuing basis cannot be overstated. Judges must continually receive education and judging, which is completely an opposite of being an advocate. Judges who are not thoroughly knowledgeable with current laws and theories, judging techniques, and the requirement of always exercising judicial independence create the risk of prejudicing those that seek the judge's assistance in resolving disputes. Without adequate funding, the public, including specifically the attorneys, HSBA members, and their clients could potentially be prejudiced or injured. Apparently, there were a lot of attorneys who wanted to see CJ Moon get roasted by the likes of current and former politicians, judges, and others, because the event was one of the largest for the HSBA. There were over 600 attendees, and after it was said and done, the jokes at CJ Moon's expense resulted in over $50,000 for a special education fund for our Trial Judges Association. Because of CJ Moon, our trial judges have heard from knowledgeable speakers on developing legal issues and practices to better serve the public, and the Trial Judges Association will continue to honor him by using the funds to further our judicial education. C.J. Moon often spoke of judicial independence, as you've heard. He commanded respect for the judiciary as a separate co-equal branch of government. As he said in 2017, judges are duty-bound to base every decision on the facts and the applicable law, and not on politics, popular opinion, or outside influences. That is why it is so important to insulate judges' decision-making from apparent political pressure. C.J. Moon was responsible for starting the legal careers of many judges on the bench today, having appointed many of us to full-time and per diem judge positions in the family and district courts throughout the state. He would give new judges the fishbowl speech. Once you become a judge, you're a public figure and you're in a fishbowl, don't forget it. He was a charismatic leader and everyone still talks about his sense of humor. Former Third Circuit Chief Judge Ronald Ibarra recalls CJ Moon's visits to the Big Island when he'd pick up CJ from the airport and drive him where he needed to go. And whether it was for a swearing in ceremony or an employee incentive award, everyone looked forward to CJ's visit and his speech because they knew that he would start with a good joke to make them laugh. Judge Ibarra even asked if he could borrow CJ's uh, joke book. CJ Moon cultivated personal relationships. He was a mentor and friend to many of us in the trial courts. He would call up his chief judges now and then to see how they were doing. Former First Circuit Chief Judge Derek Chan fondly remembers those calls. Derek, what's going on? Talk to me. Of course, the answer was always, everything's fine, CJ. Everything's just fine. And for some reason, as former Deputy Chief Judge Lono Lee remembers, those calls usually came right around 4.30. Whether it was breakfast or dinner, a meal shared with CJ Moon was always a good time. C.J. Moon's advice, counsel, and contributions to the trial courts and judges, our association, and the bar will be long remembered, even though he is no longer with us. In closing, what Judge Chan said to me the other day after reminiscing about C.J. Moon captures simply the sentiment of all judges, the legal community, and beyond. We just miss the guy. Aloha, C.J. Moon. Mahalo nui loa. Thank you, Judge Kupau Odo. Next, it's my pleasure to call upon Jesse Suki, the Vice President of the Hawaii State Bar Association. Mr. Suki. Please. My name is Jesse Suki. I serve as the Vice President of the Hawaii State Bar Association. Thank you, Honorable Chief Justice Reckonwald, for inviting the Hawaii State Bar Association to provide remarks today. 
It is an honor to be here to reflect on the contributions of Chief Justice Moon with Dr. Moon and the Moon family and honorable members of the Hawaii Supreme Court and distinguished guests, Governor Miki and Governor Waihe'i. Our President uh, Shannon Sheldon and President-elect Rhonda Griswold convey their condolences. You might speak into the mic a bit more, just so we can hear you. Thank you. In preparation for today, I read uh, the collection of Chief Justice Moon's speeches on the judiciary's website. What I share with you today is but a glimpse of a dynamic and pr productive career. My words pale in comparison to the passion, integrity, grit, intellect, and wit that resonate from his own words. I hope that folks take the time to read them. You'll be inspired and it'll make you smile. The Hawaii State Bar Association has approximately 8,130 members. Two thirds registered as active, nearly 70% of our members live in Hawaii. Chief Justice Moon joined the association on May 10th, 1966. His number is 674. As of the July 2021 Hawaii bar exam, new admittees are carrying around bar numbers in the 11,000s, 11,500 or so. A lot has changed in the practice of law in Hawaii since the bar number 674 was issued. Uh, much of it is good, and in no small part due to the leadership of Chief Justice Moon. He was an advocate for pro bono service, civics education, and diversity within the practice, among other things. In a speech to the Young Lawyers Division in 2007, Chief Justice said it was his responsibility to remind attorneys that we've been charged with the public's trust and that becoming a lawyer meant joining a helping profession. He backed up that sense of responsibility with action. Based on the Access to Justice Hui's Legal Needs Assessment in 2006, the Supreme Court adopted a mandatory pro bono reporting requirement for all attorneys. He recognized that some would chafe at a mandatory anything, as he said, but he pushed to better the profession because in his words, improving our skills as lawyers through continuing legal education benefits our clients, carrying malpractice insurance protects our clients, and donating our services to those in need is exactly what our profession is all about. His stated goal was to build trust and confidence in the legal profession. We are, he said, the only profession in Hawaii that is allowed to regulate ourselves, which is indeed a privilege and one that comes with great responsibility. Between 2002 and 2005, voluntary reported pro bono hours range from about 86,000 to 93,000. After mandatory reporting, those numbers increased to between 170,000 and 233,000 hours. I think Chief Justice Moon might tell us two things about those numbers. We're doing better and we can do better still. On civic education, Chief Justice Moon said that civic education needs to be on par with our core academic subjects. He believed that we had a role to play here too as attorneys. While teachers need the support of parents, he said, members of civic and other organizations and the community at large, most importantly, they need the support of the legal community. Again, looking for solutions, he told us what we could do. And in this one example, it was very simple. In a speech he gave to the American Judicature Society in 2007, he said volunteer to help the high school mock trial competition program. In that program, students gain a practical understanding of the workings of the American legal system. And the specific challenge at the time was finding coaches to assist. He tied this opportunity directly to his pro bono initiative where attorneys might meet their 50 hour pro bono aspirational goal. The Hawaii Rules of Professional Conduct Rule 6.1 now has a provision that counts not only free and reduced costs for legal services, but also participation in activities for improving the law, the legal system, or the legal profession. Today, the Young Lawyers Division of the Hawaii State Bar Association does an excellent job organizing the annual Hawaii High School Mock Trial Competition. The 2022 season has ended, but you can start thinking about volunteering for 2023. You, you can visit um, the HSBA website and um, the Young Lawyers Division page and you can volunteer there. 
Increasing diversity in the profession was also an important goal of Chief Justice Moon, as others before me had mentioned. In a speech he gave to the Young Lawyers Division in 2008, he recounted how upon returning from the University of Iowa Law School in search of a job in 1965, most firms in Hawaii were not hiring Asian American lawyers. But he also observed that over time, firms were beginning to improve. Still, he didn't shy away from what he said was a hard fact that discrimination and bigotry are an ugly part of this country's legacy that still exists today. This 2008 speech was tough to read. As with all of his speeches, Chief Justice Moon was prepared with statistics and anecdotes. And to suffice it to say, Hawaii is not immune to issues of racism. He noted that the issue of diversity spans all professions and urged his fellow lawyers to do better. In his words, we who are in the business of providing justice to our citizenry must recognize that demographics play a role in shaping the attributes and perceptions that can influence the business of law and the courts. Diversity allows us to be better lawyers, administering justice, and always the pragmatist who can also raise the bottom line. Chief Justice Moon led a life of important first. In 1997, he was the first Chief Justice invited to deliver a state of the judiciary address to a joint session of the legislature. In 2010, he reported that four new courthouses were completed in Kaneohe, Hilo, Kauai, and Kapolei during his tenure as Chief Justice. Under his leadership, the judiciary worked with the legislature on programs like drug court, mental health court, girls court, and the certification program for court interpreters. His work also included implementation of the electronic filing and migration system, the gyms. And if anyone's worked on migrating technology from one system to another, that alone is amazing. <laughs> the success of these initiatives is a testament to his ability to identify and pursue the needs of the community to completion. These projects are now part of his legacy. Chief Justice Moon was proud of his profession and recognized the ability of his fellow attorneys to have lasting and positive impacts on the community. In his last state of the judiciary address to the Hawaii State Legislature in 2010, he left us with these parting words. It truly has been an honor and a privilege for me during the past nearly 28 years to serve as a trial judge in the circuit court, as well as associate judge, and for the past 17 years as Chief Justice of the Hawaii Supreme Court. I am grateful to have been able to personally share this year and in past years, the many accomplishments as well as challenges of the dedicated men and women of the third branch of our government. In the spirit of Chief Justice Moon, let us all strive to do more, be better, and improve the practice in our communities. Thank you, Mr. Suki. Next, I have the privilege of introducing the Honorable David Ige, Governor of the State of Hawaii. I wanna thank Governor Ige for joining us here today and for his gracious remembrance of CJ Moon by directing that the flags uh, of our nation and of Hawaii fly at half staff on our state office buildings today. Governor Ige. Aloha. Aloha. Uh, what a privilege it is for me uh, to gather with all of you today to pay tribute to Chief Justice Ronald Moon on behalf of the state of Hawaii. Flags are flying at half staff in Hawaii as a moment of respect for CJ Moon um, and the many accomplishments of his tenure uh, on the bench. Ron Moon helped shape Hawaii as it is today and as it will be in the future for many, many years to come. Um, I was just noting that I've been to many, many events with uh, Governor Waihei, and I have to say, even state of the state addresses and inaugurations, I've never seen him wear a suit. 
Yeah. This is the first time that I've seen uh, <coughs> Governor Waihe wear a suit. So this truly is a very, very special occasion. You know, Ron and I were both appointed to public service by Governor jo George Ariyoshi. Ron was appointed a circuit court judge in uh, 1982. And I was appointed by Governor Ariyoshi to serve a vacancy in the state house in 1985. When he was appointed um, by Chief Justice, when he was appointed Chief Justice by Governor Waihei, he made a special effort to reach out to legislators. He didn't wait for us to call him, he showed up. The leader of the state's judicial branch came to our offices to talk story, to get to know us. He came to our offices intent on gathering knowledge and facts and doing his job. His real mission was to make sure the legislators understood the judiciary as a co-equal branch of government. And he came to ask us for support. When he dropped by, there were serious conversations to be sure, but he liked in each encounter with a joke. And we all know of the legendary joke book. And I certainly would love to see the joke book that Ron Moon had. Uh, and I have to admit that most of the time I found them funny. A, a few of them I didn't quite understand, uh, but his approach worked. Uh, we supported the programs he pioneered uh, and you've heard many of them. He advocated for no, four new courthouses and got them. And I can't ever recall another chief justice being able to accomplish that with the, with the legislature. Uh, and in all of these, the state moved a bit closer to his vision of a judiciary in which all are treated fairly and equally, justice for all. Certainly, he was someone who truly lived and walked those words. When I was elected governor, I, appoint, I asked CJ to serve on the East-West Center's Board of Governors. It was a tumultuous time for the East-West Center. It had become a political pawn of being deleted and added in every session of the Congress. And I truly felt we needed someone to provide stability and leadership on the East-West Center Board. And I'm proud that he agreed and he has served in that capacity over the several years since. While a very important public figure, Chief Justice Moon was also a family man. Uh, and I do want to thank his family, Mariko and his children, the Moon Ohana, for sharing him with all of us. I think we all, are better for it. On behalf of the people of Hawaii, I extend my sincere condolences to Mariko, um, their children, grandchildren, and extended Ohana, and Chief Justice Moon's many friends and colleagues. We are all better for him sharing his life with all of us. Aloha. Thank you very, very much, Governor Ige, for being here today. Once again, good afternoon and aloha. Oh, I'm so sorry. I want I apologize. I was ready to start talking myself. I jumped the gun. All right. At this time, it's uh, my honor to call upon CJ Moon's son, Dr. Scott Moon, who will speak on behalf of the Moon Ohana. Dr. Moon, thank you. CJ Rechtenwald, Associate Justices, Governor Ige, Governor Waihe, family, and honored guests. I first wanted to express our sincerest gratitude on behalf of dad's children and grandchildren, Ron Jr., wife Sally, Taylor, Carly, Micah, me, my wife Jill, our sons, Joshua and Tyler, and Julie and her husband Gary. The outpouring of support and heartfelt expressions of grief and appreciation of dad's life have been incredible. I was reluctant at first to agree to CJ Rechtenwald's gracious offer to arrange this event based on conversations we had with dad and his written directives in opposition to a large funeral service. The CJ gently reminded me that dad in a sense belonged to the people of Hawaii whom he served for so long. And it would be unfortunate if they were not given the opportunity to honor him. After talking it over with family, we agreed dad would humbly accept CJ's proposal 
and I'm fairly comfortable believing that there will be no heavenly dirty lickings when I go to the other side. As many have noted, Dad insisted a joke be inserted in any speech given, and I found his joke book, and I'd be happy to share it with you. <laughs> 777 great clean jokes in the chapter <laughs> under education. Just to establish parameters, said the professor, Mr. Franklin, what's the opposite of J-O-Y? Joy. He said sadness. And the opposite of depression, Miss Walk, Miss Walker, uh, elation. And you, Miss Paget, how about the opposite of W O E? Whoa, she says. I believe that would be giddy up. Mm -hmm. Only in this great country, United States of America, Representative Republic, could the Kolohe grandson of immigrants among the first to come to Hawaii from Korea rise to the highest levels of state government, heading one of the three co-equal branches of government. I say Kolohe as he attended four different high schools before finally graduating. Leilahua, Iolani, McKinley, and finally NPI. His tongue-in-cheek explanation for this was that he contemplated a career in politics and needed to cu cultivate constituents across the island. <laughs> he was a known Republican, as was noted, and in a deep blue state, which likely meant that there was political courage required for Democrat governors Ariyoshi and Wahei to nominate him to the bench, circuit followed by the Supreme Court. I think they were both ultimately pleased with their choice as he kept his oath to faithfully interpret the law equally without bias. He was careful to not abuse his power to advance a personal agenda. Dad's good friend, Harry Hasuike, forwarded an interview Dad gave to Korean reporter Jin Young Lee Wan. She brought up Grandpa Moon's quote that was posted downstairs as well, saying public service is the rent we pay, we pay for occupying space on earth. Dad commented in the interview that Grandpa Moon paid a lot of rent. And I'm sure Grandpa Moon would be pleased with Dad's contributions as well. Dad loved God, Jesus Christ, his family, this great country, and his home state of Hawaii. I ran across notes he had typed up for another speech, including a number of Bible verses that were there. And one that stuck out was 2 Corinthians 5.17. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has gone, the new has come. Before wrapping up my remarks, uh, many have inquired, so I believe it would be appropriate to announce that in lieu of monetary gifts, charitable donations to organizations aligned with Dad's vision, mission, and life and his historic donation patterns could be directed to the Wahiwa United Church of Christ, formerly the Korean Christian Church of Wahiwa, Grassroot Institute of Hawaii, Kickstart Karate, and or the Honolulu Police Community Foundation. So finally, I just wanted to share this. Dad was adopted by different cultures and ethnic groups, including Filipinos, Chinese, and Hawaiians. One of the most memorable events I was fortunate enough to attend was his elevation from honorary ali'i of the Royal Order of Kamehameha I to knighthood on Founders Day, December 11, 2011. Queen Ka'ahumanu became a devoted Christian as well and was credited with helping to usher in the Great Awakening in the 1830s and 40s. She passed away June, 190 years ago, with Reverend Bingham attending. Her last words, I'm going where the mansions are ready. I like to think both dad and the queen were greeted at their mansions with the words, well done, good and faithful servant. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Moon, on behalf of the family. All right, once again, good afternoon, aloha. And I wanna welcome all of our guests here today, uh, the Moon Ohana, Governor Waihe'e, Governor Ige, Senator Hirono, who flew across the country from Washington, D.C., where I think she had a very busy weekend. Mayor Blangiardi, um, current and retired judges and justices from both the federal and state courts, uh, representatives uh, of the Royal Order, and many, many other honored guests once again. Aloha and welcome here to Ali'i Olani Hale. I want to start by saying mahalo to the members of the Supreme Court staff, including the clerk's office, who worked so hard to make this event possible in a fitting remembrance of C.J. Moon. They worked their hearts out, uh, and I want to thank them and acknowledge them, and particularly acknowledge uh, Jay Atabursio, Ginger Pana, Kurt Shibata, and Lois Choi. And I also want to acknowledge the Judiciary History Center, Matt Matisse, and his team for creating the beautiful banner 
in the atrium downstairs uh, commemorating some of the significant events of C.J. Moon's life. Can you please join me in acknowledging all these folks? Thank you. As you heard, C.J. Moon started almost every speech with a little bit of humor. So in that spirit, I'd like to recount a story he once told to a magazine reporter. After C.J. returned home from Iowa as a newly minted college graduate, he spent the summer working at his parents' clothing shop at Wahiwa. One day, his father, Duke, asked him to sweep the sidewalk in front of the store. Sweep the sidewalk, C.J. replied. Gee, Dad, I'm a college graduate, you know. His dad put an arm around his shoulder. Oh, right said Duke, I almost forgot. Come with me, son, and I'll show you how. Apart from demonstrating his Kolohe sense of humor, that story demonstrates one of the many values that CJ learned from his parents, who were the children of Korean immigrants who came to work in the, on the plantations. It demonstrates the importance of humility. CJ liked to quote his father as saying, as you just heard Dr. Moon recount, public service is the rent you pay for the time you're here on earth. And there's no doubt that CJ lived up to that creed. CJ Moon was a transformative leader. The judiciary wouldn't look nearly the same without his influence. It would be a less efficient and less effective place to be sure. But more than that, CJ worked to make the judiciary more caring, more human, and more accessible. He used to speak out against black robe syndrome, syndrome about how donning the black robe of a judge could turn a lawyer into being arrogant and aloof. And in line with that warning, he always remained humble and approachable to all. He cast the judiciary in that image, pioneering new specialty courts to meet the needs of vulnerable populations, streamlining our public access points into one-stop service centers where people could walk in and have their questions answered, launching a court interpreter program for many the many Hawaii residents whose first language is not English, and so much more. His 17 year tenure as the head of this court was marked by his commitment to access to justice. He once said, without meaningful access to law simply becomes an unfulfilled pro promise. He worked tirelessly to ensure that this commitment, this promise of equal justice is a fundamental tenet of our Hawaii judiciary. Here in Hawaii, thanks to CJ's, uh, CJ's leadership, the court created the Access to Justice Commission whose importance cannot be overstated. And I see Dan Foley, who I believe was the first chair of the commission here, uh, and also Simina Koba has served as chair and now Judge Cardoza, Joe Cardoza. And that group has really made an incredible impact. And that all started back when uh, Chief Justice Moon and the court directed that the commission be created. And he had a real, he was a real force on the national level as well. He served leadership posts in the, in the National Center for State Courts, and the Conference of Chief Justices, including as chair of the Access and Fairness in the Courts Committee, where he helped uh, promote judicial diversity across the country. He was, as you've heard, a fierce defender of judicial independence. Early in his career as a circuit court judge, he was faced with the case of a woman who was denied Medicaid coverage for an experimental heart-lung transplant that she needed to survive. Retiring to his chambers, the woman's life in his hands, he recalled the words of his mentor, Federal Judge Martin Pence. The black robe will not shield you from feeling sympathy, apprehension, or passion. Your job is to recognize that those feelings will surface, but as difficult as it might be, you must consciously and purposely set them aside. Based on the law alone, he ruled in favor of the woman. And he later wrote in an op-ed that he wrote in the, Star, in the uh, Honolulu Advertiser, that judicial independence is not, as some may believe, for the protection of judges is for the protection of our society against those who commit crimes, the protection of our free enterprise system, and the protection of the rights that every citizen is guaranteed under our state and federal constitutions. CJ was a strong believer in our system of government. And as you've heard, he believed that the vitality of our democracy depended on civic education, on people understanding the constitution, and especially the role of the courts. And he never missed an opportunity to speak with the crowd, especially students and young people, on the topic of our court system. On one occasion, he, re, he, respoke, he returned to Wahiwa to speak to students at an elementary school. He brought two wide-eyed students up to the front of the class and let them put on his robe as an exercise about the role of a judge. And he put it best when he told the students, it's your system, you should know about it. 
Under his leadership, the Moon Court published many notable decisions that reshaped Hawaii's legal landscape. He joined Justice Levinson, Levinson's opinion in uh, Bear versus Lewin, where the court became the first in the nation to recognize the right to same-sex marriage. He was a member of the unanimous court that issued the Pash versus Hawaii County Planning Commission case, recognizing robust protections for Native Hawaiian cultural practices. And he also authored Kalima versus State, which ruled that beneficiaries of the Hawaiian Homelands Trust could sue to enforce the terms of that trust. Nationally, CJ is recognized as the first person of Korean ancestry ever to serve as the Chief Justice of an American court. His grandfathers both labored in the plantations and his parents operated a clothing store up in Wahiwa, raising CJ and his three siblings in a flat upstairs. His parents, uh, grandparents were instrumental in establishing the Wahiwa Korean Christian Church, which he attended every Sunday. He embodied his oh Ohana's work ethic and commitment to their community. I first came to know CJ when I became a judge on the Intermediate Court of Appeals back in 2007, and then when I was an associate justice at the end of his tenure as chief here at the court. It was like playing for a legendary old school football coach. He set high standards and you did everything in your power not to disappoint him. After he retired, our relationship changed and he became a trusted mentor and close friend. He faced a lot of challenges in those years, but he never lost his incredible fighting spirit or his sense of humor. I always looked forward to the days we'd get together for lunch with his voice booming, CJ, as he greeted me with that strong handshake and rascal smile. It took forever for CJ to make his way up from the parking lot to my office here behind where, we, where I'm sitting today, as he would talk story with everyone he encountered along the way. And what Judge Broderick shared, the story he shared about one of our employees passing away really resonated because that really was who C.J. Moon was, and really the staff of uh, here at the court and across the state had the deepest of affection for C.J. Moon, and it was a product of years of his genuine friendship and respect for each of them. And going out to lunch with C.J. at a Korean restaurant was like being with a K-pop star. He was truly an icon. I'll miss those lunches, but will for forever treasure uh, the time I got to spend with C.J. Moon and my friendship with him. As a mentor, leader, and judge, C.J. Moon's legacy looms large. We honor that legacy by doing what we can in service of our community. In 1994, C.J. Moon addressed, us, addressed a group of top high school students at the Honolulu Advertisers All-State Scholar Banquet. His parting words were a quote from Nobel Prize winning novelist, John Galsworthy, and I will leave you with those words today. I shall pass through this world but once, any good things, therefore I can do, or any kindness that I can show to any human being, let me do it now. Let me not defer it or neglect it, for I shall not pass this way again. To the Moon Ohana, thank you again for allowing us to honor your beloved husband, father, and grandfather today. Our love and aloha are with him and with you now and always. And there being no further business, this court stands adjourned. Eku iluna. Please rise. Ua ho'oku ia mai ne ke a halavai kui kava aka aha. Ho'okolo kolo ki ike hano hano okumoku aina o Hawaii. The special session of this honorable Supreme Court of the State of Hawaii is now adjourned.